everybody. Mike here with Flipping Goodies. Today is Friday. Um, we're going to talk about the top 10 reasons why you should be selling on Walmart. Make notes, so be careful. So actually, there's probably a lot more, but I already made the thumbnail, so we're going to stay with the 10. Um, because I'm not remaking a thumbnail. Although, realistically, I just have to change the number, right? Well, let's just stay with 10. I'm sure you get the idea by the end. All right, number one, there is a lot of opportunity to sell all types of items, okay? Whether that be Nike or used or whatever type of item, for the most part, you'll be able to sell it on Walmart. Now, not everything in the world can you sell. I mean, let's be reasonable, but very few limitations. That's number 10. Number nine, lower fees. So you're looking at anywhere from eight to 15% fees depending on the item and depending on the cost. So uh, usually things under $10 are gonna be eight to 8%, eight and then most other things would be about 15. Um, which if you really break it down, works out to be one of the cheapest ways to go as far as fees are concerned. Uh, so Walmart wins there. Number eight, no monthly fees. There's no $39.99 like Amazon. There's no $64.95 or whatever eBay is these days. I think it's $64-ish um, per month. So for your store on Walmart, you do not pay a dime. So that will um, lead us into one of our higher uh, top 10 of why you sell Walmart. We'll talk about that in a minute. So no monthly fees, which is just awesome. There's no... Uh, no burden on you as far as if you're not making any sales it's really not costing you anything to be there now Amazon eBay can't say that all right that's number eight number seven it is probably right now I would say the most well it is growing rapidly they are changing things on the back end to make it a little bit more streamlined they've changed some of their rating systems to make it a little bit easier for sellers to maintain a high level of selling um they've worked around a few things such as their 15 percent fees right now some of them are um actually lowering the price of your item by 10 percent and only charging you five percent well and then they eat the rest of it. So realistically, Walmart is really working hard on getting all the quirks out of the back end. Now it's still quirky. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, was it yesterday? Two days ago, I had over 70 million items listed on Walmart. 70 million items. I probably had more items listed on Walmart than Walmart itself. I didn't have 70 million items to sell though. And I got caught up in it and I had to take a uh, cancellation on one because I didn't have it anymore. And somehow my inventory just went rocketing. Um, I still have a few Walmart fulfilled stuff that says a million. So that's on them, not me. So I'm gonna leave that. So um, they're fixing this stuff. It is still a little quirky. There are some workarounds. If you watch my videos, I'm gonna start talking about how to work around those issues um and then go from there now number six i didn't write anything there or i can't read my own handwriting uh what i write there doesn't look like i wrote anything there so number six let's go to uh walmart wants you to sell they don't want people there um that are gonna throw up a bunch of items that aren't gonna be selling so the fact that they don't charge you fees for your store um they do take a percentage for every sale but it's a very reasonable amount uh if you really think about it, some people on ebay are paying 30 35 percent fees now because they're promoting at 15 20 percent it's crazy numbers um 
And then the 8% side of it, if you have items like that, that's going to work out great for you. Less fees, more money in your pocket. So they want you to sell. They're, they're giving up, like I said before, they're giving up 10% of their 15% fee to lower the price of your item. So I'll give you an example. You have a $100 item. You sell it for $100. Normally, uh, Walmart's going to grab 15 of that. You get paid 85 right? Well, you're no worse off for the wear here. They're still going to grab their 15 but they've lowered your price down to 90 to help you sell that item. So in reality, they're only taking 5% of that sale at this point. Um, so that is a nice little perk. Let's see eBay do that for us and say, um, we're going to charge uh, 13%. But we're going to lower the price of your item 10% and only collect 3%. I want to see eBay say those words. Guarantee you they're not. Okay, number five, higher return on investment. I find that most of my items I can get way more money on Walmart than I can on eBay or Amazon. Um, that's not every item, but most, okay? This is not set in stone, this is not a rule. I'm gonna say most items you're gonna get more money for. Okay, so that was number five. Number four, again, you can sell almost anything. We discussed this earlier. It was a um, different, it was, that was number 10, lots of opportunity to sell items. Um, but you can sell almost anything. You can list, uh, like I have a ton of UCDs up there. I have used Wii's. Um, use Wii games. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I've used, uh, figurines, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so it's not limited to just new items. So anybody that sells on eBay that has a lot of used stuff, you can, I have stereos up there that are used. I mean, VCRs, you know, not VCRs, but VCR DVD players. Um, but be wise about what you're doing. Learn the rules, otherwise you will get suspended. Learn the rules, otherwise you will get kicked off. Uh, and it's very easy. Um, so yeah, so that's a good thing. I mean, that is like, maybe maybe it's worth having it on here twice. Now, number three, okay, and this is big. Less sellers on Walmart than any other platform. Well, I'm not gonna say any other platform. The three majors that we're talking about, Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. Way less sellers. You're talking about ratios of uh, 20 to one, compared to Amazon, a little bit higher, realistically, but Walmart has about 200,000 sellers. Uh, Amazon has 2.5. Uh, eBay's at the atmosphere with like 19 million US sellers, I think it is. So think about those numbers, think about the opportunity, and um, think about all the other perks that Walmart's actually giving to you that you're not aware of by thinking, oh, it's Walmart, it's gotta be brand new items. It's not true. Okay, number two, and this is really um, something you really need to look at and, and say to yourself, is it the right theory for your business? Okay, because not every business can conform to selling on Walmart. Uh, used clothing, and eh. I mean, I found some used clothing listings, but I don't think you're gonna do well on Walmart there. Um, now electronics, uh, new clothing, Sneakers, stuff like that, you're gonna do well, okay? Uh, so, number two is never a good idea to keep all your eggs in one basket. God forbid you got suspended, what do you do? Especially if you're full-time. See, I'm part-time, so this kind of, I mean, I'd hate to get suspended, but doesn't wouldn't be life-ending for me, but for some people that rely on this income every week or month or whatever they're getting, um, this could be killer. So. If you're suspended on a platform, let's say you're on eBay and you get suspended, what do you do? You don't just jump ship and, and load up all your items someplace else. That takes a while. This is not an overnight process. For me, I have my I have all my inventory on Shopify. Um, it's spread out between eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Etsy, and a few other channels that are pretty much mindless. Google, uh, TikTok now, I've made a couple of sales there. Facebook, Instagram. But they're kind of mindless to me, so I don't mind uh, putting them over there. Um, so yeah, so the more diversified you are, that's like saying, that's like Walmart saying, or or uh, any big 
food chain. We're going to put one store in the middle of the country and everybody come to us. Does that work? That's not going to work. Um, so being diversified is actually a good thing, um, in my opinion, and also something that can help your business grow over time. And the security of it, just knowing it's there as a backup, is always a good thing. All right. Number one, and this is probably the most important listing on here. Walmart is a great place for sellers because I said so. Hmm. I had to throw in something um, to make it a top 10. So overall, like I said, Walmart is growing rapidly. It's a great place to sell once you learn how to sell there. And the learning curve is not that extreme. Okay. Um, you'll hear a lot of people talk about there's a lot of quirky stuff going on in the back end. And there is. Like I told you, 70 million items the other day. Um, you'll notice a lot of things like uh, it will say that you're out of inventory on the website. But when you look at your uh, item at Seller Center, it shows one and zero available so there's an easy fix for that just change the one to a two change it back to a one boom bang you're back up and listed so there's a few quirky things that happen um but you don't have the race to the bottom for the most part because there are some amazon sellers coming over that will run you down um but for the most part you do not have the race to the bottom they also have what's called pro seller if you can become a pro seller um, and in the beginning, it's very easy. I was a pro seller right off the bat. No problem. Now, not so much because I have a lot of items listed up there. And, um, if you don't meet certain criteria and the criteria has changed also, it's like seven steps now to, to make it to pro seller. I'm one step away and hoping to have that resolved before the 20th, which is when they're going to rate the sellers again. So pro seller gives you buy box preference. So you can go a few dollars higher than everybody else is still in the buy box. If you're a pro seller and a Walmart fulfillment, you beat out anybody that's Walmart fulfilled. Um, not anybody, you gotta be reasonably priced, but I'm just saying you can be, still be a couple of dollars higher and win that buy box, which is important. Not a lot of people understand that what's in the buy box and there's other options below it. A lot of people that aren't savvy to that. Us as sellers, we know that that's there. A lot of buyers, they see that one box, it's like, okay, it's $19.99, that's what I want to pay. Boom, buy it, and they're out the door. Little did they realize there was listings below it for $18.99 or $17.99. They don't realize that. So winning that buy box is key. Um, what else? The less sellers factor. Huge. Huge in my opinion. Um, again, no one gating like Amazon. You don't have to go through all that rigmarole. Get invoices, then send it up to them then you gotta wait for the approval once you're approved then they might hit you with something else once you're through the gate um it's just a pain in the neck the process takes time costs you money and um in the end you might not be able to sell that item so um that's a nice thing to have um the other thing is the no monthly fees obviously if they're not collecting fees from you right how are they gonna make money off you you got to sell stuff. So they're going to want you to sell stuff. Perfect. Uh, let's see. And the fee structure. Great. Pay less. Sell it for more. Isn't that a great idea? I want to pay you less. But I want to sell my item for more. Great. Love it. Um, and again, going back to number one and a half or number two on this list. Diversification. Every business needs to diversify, in my opinion. The, wide, the more widespread you are, the more eyes you have on your items, the more you're gonna sell. It's just a natural uh, occurrence, right? Is that the word I'm looking for? It's just the way things work. If I can put this cassette tape in front of one person, it may never sell. But if I take the same cassette person, uh, cassette tape, and put it in front of 10 people, one person's bound to buy it. Way more likely that when 10 people see it, it'll get sold. Compared to one person looking at it, it might not get sold. So um, 
Things like that are why I love, love, and I've been on it three years, love selling on Walmart is my number one platform uh, form by far. Not even close. Amazon and eBay, they're not even close to the level I am on Walmart. And it took me three years to get this far and a lot of work, a lot of due diligence, a lot of trial and error. And as I've gone further and further down this path, I feel like the opportunities just get bigger and bigger. I mean, it's something where every time I look for things that I just like to sell now, it just seems like, oh, I can sell that now. I can sell this. I can sell that. Um, and then, oh, wait, you know what? Maybe this isn't a perfect used item for Walmart because you don't want to sell junk on there. So you might say to yourself, oh, you know what? This one I'm not going to put on Walmart. I'll put it on eBay to get rid of it. Okay. So. I've discussed this before. When you're thinking about cross-listing and you're saying to yourself, well, eBay isn't doing as well as it used to. And you're thinking about cross-listing. Why would you go down to Macari and Posh? Those are less viewers. Um, why wouldn't you want to look up and say, hey, you know what? Where can I get this? Where can I take this item and get more views on it? Well, you want to go up with websites that have more users, right? More users, more views, more chance of selling it. All right, so that's the top 10 reasons why you should be selling on Walmart. Now, be careful. I'll have a video out in the next couple of days of at least five reasons you shouldn't sell on Walmart. Um, and the number one reason I'm gonna tell you right now is because I sell on it. I'd love to help you out, help you increase your business, but if you don't wanna join Walmart, that's just more benefit to me because it just makes it more opportunity for me to sell my stuff. Hopefully we'll see you on Walmart one day. Thanks for watching.